This is Twit. All right, so this is the the part of the interview where we kind of dive into uh, what it's like to invent all these crazy things that we take for granted. I feel like that, what I walked away from the book with uh, is that we do take so many things for granted, right? Like this book covers so much ground and I, I can't, I, I'm very curious to know how you researched for it or if this is just kind of information that you have, you know, bouncing around inside the brain of yours. And if so, man, I want that brain. But um, it's so comprehensive, yet at the same time, so many of these concepts that, that it took humankind, you know, our entire existence to figure out seem so simple when you look at it through the lens of the book. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so the book started because I saw Back to the Future when I was a kid, like a lot of us did. Yep. And then I spent the next 10 years thinking about time travel, which I think a lot of us did. And I think if you really sincerely interrogate yourself about time travel, thinking, what would I do when I, when I go back in time? Not if, but when. What would, what would I do? Uh, you realize that you're probably going to be pretty useless outside of a very narrow range. Like I can go back and warn my previous self about I don't even know, lottery numbers or something, but send me back 100, 200 years and you're kind of reduced to saying, you know, in the future, it's great. We have computers and people say, cool, how do you invent computers? And you say, I don't know. <laughs> but when you have them, they're going to be terrific. Like That was my sincere worry of being a, a sucky time traveler, being trapped in the past and not being able to answer questions. And I kept wanting for there to be a book that told you what to do when you were a time traveler. And uh, eventually I wrote it. <laughs> I didn't want to write. It was a lot of work to write, but I wanted to read it. And so you, you got to bite the bullet and produce that stuff sometimes in your writer. So the, the, uh, the process of researching it was basically uh, a lot of work, a lot of reading, a lot of, uh, a lot of everything. But I remember the fun part was making a list of stuff that I thought I might need before I'd done any research and saying, I think this might be important. And then... Um, going through that and trying to figure out what the missing pieces is, what's the connective tissue that I need. Like if you're going to invent a computer, you need to have all these other inventions before that, the prerequisites. So I started building a tech tree for real life technology, which was a lot of fun and just started assembling it together. And like I said, it took me a long time to realize it would even work. I thought I might just have a bunch of weird essays on different pieces of technology until it started to coalesce into Okay, no, this will work. You can you can build a time traveler guide to civilization. You can, this is actually a possible project, which is always nice. Like, I feel like whenever you are in the middle in the weed in the weeds of a big project, you think, "Oh no, I've done it again. I've chosen to do something impossible." And it's only experience that teaches you that it's usually not impossible. It's just really really hard. And you can work with really really hard. You can't work with impossible. If something's hard, there's a way through there. It's just difficult. Right. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's some sort of path to be found. The challenge is finding that path. Um, yeah. Filled obviously with with technologies. Maybe we can kind of dive into uh, kind of the the overarching uh, fundamentals that you list. There's five of them. There's spoken language, written language, non sucky numbers (air quotes on yeah. non sucky), uh, <laughs> scientific method, and calorie surplus. And like I could I can imagine from a research perspective. Like, I don't know if you start there and then you span out or if you have everything out and then you realize, hey, they fit into these five neat categories. But that really does seem to kind of cover the basis of, of uh, the foundation for what needs to be there for so much in this book to even exist, right? Yeah, and you're right. I did the other stuff first and then came back to that to be like, what are the, what are the critical things here? But the neat thing about all those technologies is that they're all information-based. Like, once you have yeah. the idea of them, you're good to go. And it I feel like it strikes a lot of people as weird to think of language as a technology because we didn't know, none of us remember having to learn it. You, you get it for free almost, even though you didn't get it for free, you had to learn it as a child. And the crazy thing about babies is they not only learn their language just from hearing it, but also have to invent the very idea of language. Like they have to hear people speaking and think, I bet you that contains meaning. I wonder if there's a grammar. Maybe these are nouns. And like you're doing that from first principles. So <laughs> learning language is incredible. But you need someone there in the first place to be speaking it. And that that's a big leap. But but you get that for free as a time traveler. You already have language. You already have writing. You just need to teach it. And uh, calorie surplus is basically, okay, so you, you start producing more food than you need to eat. So you don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. And once you've got that squared away, when you're not worrying about where your food's coming from, you can start worrying about other things. Like, why does the sun seem to rise and set? 
what is gravity? Let's let's puzzle this out. And non sucky numbers is just to avoid the faults that we had dealing with what I call in the book sucky numbers, where you know Roman numerals and stuff like that, where it literally holds back your civilization because you're trying to. It's very hard to do math if you have a number system that doesn't support that gets in your way and prevents you from thinking clearly about numbers. Yeah. So save some time. Skip Roman numerals. <laughs> no one wants the no Roman numerals. <laughs> They're uh, no good. No, I, 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 I love method, of course. Yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go for it. The scientific method lets you uh, produce knowledge in a way that is repeatable and uh, testable. And it doesn't give you perfect knowledge, but it lets you produce knowledge that's gradually more correct. So you'll make mistakes, but you'll be able to test those mistakes and learn that they're wrong, which, again, we didn't have for a really long time. And it led us to things like, you know, thinking, medis thinking diseases are caused by uh, an imbalance of yellow and black bile in your body, which is not the case. But we thought that longer than we thought, longer than we've known what a germ is. And there's been more progress that's been made in medicine since we came up with science and invented the germ theory of disease than there has been in all the centuries before that because we were laboring under bad ideas that we couldn't test because we didn't have science. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, at one point, I, I have kind of like a list of, of, of a few things that while I was reading, I was like, I don't know, for whatever for whatever reason, it made me smile or, or kind of scratch my head or go, man, that's so much more simpler, you know, more simple than I thought it was. But right. uh, the penicillin part really struck me where you had a civilization pro tip. Sometimes all you need to do to become one of the greatest scientists in history is to pick your nose and wipe it on a, petri uh, on a Petri dish because, yeah. because from there you end up, yeah, you, you, I, you're, you end up kind of getting to penicillin very easily. Weird little things like that, that, and I, I, I think you, you point this out time and time again throughout the book that all of these things are foundational, but at some point someone decided to, to mix this with that or to, uh, I think, what was it, tie a rock to a string. and a rock to a string for the compass, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It really underlines, like, so many, so many popular science books take the premise, which I think is pretty fair, usually, that humans are pretty smart. Look how smart we are. Here's the cool things we've done. And the fact is, when you look at when we had what we needed to invent something, we had the prerequisites, when we actually invented it, there's usually gaps of thousands or tens of thousands of years sometimes because it, it takes innovation and bright ideas to, to come up with this new stuff. Uh, the compass, the one you mentioned, is great because 200 BCE, we have the ancient Greeks noticing that some rocks stick together. They've discovered basic magnets. And we only met the compass in 1000 CE. And there it's used for fortune telling. It takes another 100 years before it's used for navigation. And so there's 1200 years where we could have invented the compass and didn't. And Pardon me, like you say, it's just that, that venting a compass isn't, you know, the, the tiny piece of metal balanced on a pin uh, wrapped in plastic. It's just tying a rock to a string because the rock lets the, or the string lets the rock rotate freely. The rock points towards magnetic north. That's your compass. All you need to do to vent a compass is tie a rock to a string. It took us over a thousand years. <laughs> To think about doing that. There's room to improve. Obviously, there's room to improve. But um, but then at the same time, like it's it's easy to say that in hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on so many things, hindsight is is twenty twenty. Uh, easy to think that we should have discovered this sooner. But even the the simplest things are difficult to spot when you're in the the moment, right? Like th like that seems like the easiest yeah. thing and the most you know it's it's surprising that no one ever did that before tied a rock to a string, but they didn't because there was the, it was just there was no reason to until some no point to. they thought maybe this would be a good idea. Like why does it take yeah. so long to figure and, these things out? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's kind of the stealth, most inspirational thing in the book. I never said explicitly in how to been everything, but there's this idea, sort of hopefully implied that. If there are all these instances in history in which we had what we needed to invent something and didn't invent it until a long time later, it stands to reason by analogy that there's probably something right now in 2018 that we could be inventing but haven't invented yet. That We have everything we need but haven't put the pieces together in the right way. And I think that's a really fun, really inspirational idea to, to know that there's something new out there that anyone can invent. You just need to figure out how to do it, where to put the piece together that we already have in the right way. And I'm I'm definitely not going to be the one to do it, but to do it. But I can't wait to see who does actually invent things like that.